So today we're going to install some stainless steel braided brake lines. This is a brake line for a two inch lift. You'll notice uh, I have a, a block in the anti sway bar, and down here is a two inch solid block for uh, lifting the front springs. Now these blocks do have a hole drilled through of them so that the shock absorber can extend through. And these blocks and springs are held in with grade 8 spring retainers. And if you do this modification with a lifting block, make sure that everything is secured down with grade 8 fasteners and that you replace the fasteners every five years. And you'll also notice that these brake calipers look a little big for a Discovery 1. This is a 1996 Land Rover Discovery and I got these Defender brake calipers from PT SRAM. A buddy of mine out west, of course I'm out east so he's out west, but if you're out west that means he's out east, etc, etc. But uh, you call up PT SRAM and he'll send you a set of these uh, with uh, brake pads. And so we're going to replace the old rubber line mostly because that is what is holding the suspension from uh, flexing fully and we don't want to do that off-road because we'll tear, <clears throat> tear out our brakes and then we get to drive home with the emergency brake and that's not happening. Let's bleed out the brake system get all the air out of the ABS modulator we're going to use the uh, ABS modulator that I built uh, that's in a different video my great nephew and I put this together and it's going to turn the solenoids on and off on and off and it's going to uh, turn the pump on and it's going to help us uh, completely bleed the system. This power brake bleeder. This is something I bought off of Amazon. Uh, cheap money. We'll see how well it works. I did have to modify the chain right here. This chain comes around uh, and encircles the entire unit because if you pressurize your reservoir and it's insecure, it's just going to pop off and blow your system, blow your brake fluid all over the place. So we don't want to do that. So uh, this is chained down very nicely, and um, we'll see how well it works. So theoretically, we just disconnect the line here, disconnect the line there, throw the new one in, and we bleed it out. I'm not going to show everything. Uh, unscrewing this and unscrewing that it's kind of mundane but um, we'll be right back after I put the new line on did forget to mention I do have to take pressure off the suspension by jacking up the axle just a tiny bit so I got my bleeder bottle hooked up and a wrench pre-positioned on the bleeder screw got my nice new Stainless steel braided line. Got the modulator hooked up, power bleeder hooked up, pressurized. So let's turn this on. Initiate. And let's go bleed. Oh, I didn't run out of pressure. I guess I just ran out of air bubbles. Come on, self focus. There we go. So we uh, come around again, open her up, yeah we're getting fluid out of it, oh there's some, some air bubbles, that's good. Let's close her up, come on over here, check pressure. Enough pressure. Make sure we have fluid in the reservoir. Let's open her up again. We're getting good flow. See the level very rising very slowly. Watch it. I'm saying this, this is bled out. Something interesting. 
My reservoir is very old. It doesn't like being pressurized. Got a crack there. Got a crack there. So uh, after we're done bleeding this out, we'll get a new master cylinder reservoir. Right after I saw the uh, cracks, it uh, leaked all over the place. Boy, what a mess. Uh, always remember, brake fluid will remove paint. So uh, immediately hit it with soapy water, clean it all up. So we'll let that sit for uh, a day. I thought I had an extra reservoir. I looked around. I do not. So we'll just have to delay this project um, until another reservoir comes in. And what I'll do is um, I will try and continue after eight hours uh, letting the JB Weld set up. And I will cloak it with a rag in case it does burst again. But I don't think it's really going to hold. But I, I do want to get this project along. Ah, JB Weld to the rescue. Let's see how well she does. I'll get this uh, pressure bleeder hooked back up. Get it hooked up and shrouded. Got my brake bleeder bottle, my wrench ready, and gonna pump it up. All right, let's see if we can bleed out the entire system. So I got the brake bleeder on the right rear, and that's where we're gonna start. So the JV weld did not work, still leaks. So we're not going to use <clears throat> the pressure bleeder. We're going to use the ABS modulator unit and just go inside to uh, pump it manually. So let's turn this on. Go inside. Did not see a dramatic increase in the feel of the pedal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, motor leads inside a rubber glove. Turn it on. And I'm just going to bleed it, cycling the solenoids. Now she's starting to feel hard. The next wheel, and we have a light. Wow, big difference. Stop pumping when the force between pumps is equalized. So every ABS system works on the same principle, but it may be plumbed just a little bit differently. Let's get some autofocus in here. There we go. And I bled this both uh, with no actuation, and then I bled it with the motor and the solenoids running, and then I bled it with just the solenoids running. Now, after I bled it without uh, actuating the solenoids of the motor, I had perfectly clear fluid. And then after I bled it with the uh, motor and the solenoids running, uh, I had perfectly clear fluid. So I bled it without the motor running. And it's an old bottle, so ignore the spot to goo on the side. But that is terrible fluid and that's what was inside my ABS unit now I've tried to bleed this unit out by driving down a dirt road and slamming on the brakes to get the ABS to uh, actuate and I could never uh, ever get a firm pedal out of this so uh, this garbage was inside my ABS unit the only way to get it out is to bleed it while cycling the solenoids, but without the motor running. 
Very interesting. Like and subscribe, or I'll set this fella loose in your garage. <laughs>